Sunday here. Yeah. It's always like that here. Okay. Sunday well, good afternoon, everyone. It's three o'clock. It would be a good time to start the meeting. Yeah. Hello. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to the special workshop meeting of the Oak Harbor City Council. Mayor Bob Severns will not be able to join us this for this workshop. Uh, before we start, um, Sir Joe already sitting there at the other end of the table ready for the report. But before we do that, let's introduce ourselves mm -hmm. around the table. I'll start. Uh, I'm Danny Pagal, Mayor Pro Tem. Jim Campbell, City Council. Joel Cervadius, City Council. Beth Munn, City Council. Rick Ong, City Council. Steve Powers, Director of Development Services. Joe Stowell, City Engineer. Jeff McGraw, MWA Architects. Gil Williams, Greenworks, Landscape Architects. Erica Wassinger, City Council. Thank you very much. And uh, we also have some staffs outside the table, starting with Ms. Kathy Rawson, Public Works Director. <laughs> and we have some other city staff behind here. Uh, Brett Arvidsson, uh, Project Engineer. Dennis Beaver, Development Services. Solovite Instructor. Very good. And we have some consultants also around outside the table. Uh, Carl Heidler, Engineer. I'm uh, Chad Sanderson with NWA Architects. Jennifer DeVanton with Greenworks, Landscape Architects. Oh, thank you very much for the introductions. Now we start with the report with, uh, on the clean water facility architectural design. We give it to Mr. George Stoll, City Engineer. Well, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Uh, this is actually, I am hoping to be a really fun conversation. We have talked about the architecture of the plant and what it means to the community, and uh, we've seen some previews over time of, of what our proposals are, and we told you that we'd come back with more detail as we had it, and well, that's what we're here today for. So it uh, should be pretty straightforward and easy to, to work through. Uh, and I'm kind of... It's always good to kind of remember where we came from. We didn't just dream this stuff up yesterday and come in here and put it down on the table and say, oh, let's, uh, this is what we're coming up with. We've had a lot of communications with the public. Um, over, the, over time, back in April of uh, 2011 even, uh, council selected five potential sites and uh, we moved forward and in, in August of 2012, we selected the Windjammer vicinity. So there was a lot of public meetings and outreach, and when we got to that meeting in April, uh, we understood that the, the architecture uh, would have to, would, would play an important part in the project given where its location would be. So in um, March of 2013, we, we completed the facilities plan, which included um, a treatment plan in Windjammer vicinity and uh, it was processed and approved by Ecology in November and Council adopted that facilities plan in December of 2013. There you go. And then 2014 we had, uh, you know, we went through the, 2014 was a tumultuous year for us. We went through a lot of, a lot of uh, siting and how are we gonna place this building, purchasing property um, archaeological surveys, all these different things that we did to get the plant to the location that we've chosen. And then in September, uh, Council, September of 2015, Council uh, selected the architectural concept uh, for the project, Concept B. And October 20th, we revised the drawings uh, on the community room and returned to Council on the 15th uh, and decided not to include a community room in the project. So that's kind of the rough, um, and there's, you can see along the bottom bar there, there's a whole list, litany of opportunities for public involvement and access to what it was that we were proposing. And this is the, this is, this was actually an attachment to one of the resolutions when we uh, picked the location for the treatment plant. Now, we know things have changed, you know, Bayshore, is looking much like a thing in the distant, distant past. And the potential future connectors, you know, a lot of these things have changed, but the, 
the core walls of where the treatment plan is have remained the same. Uh, in 2014, when we were trying to figure out, okay, now we have this uh, layout for a treatment plant, what do we do with the outside walls? We went out to a, a council work, public work group and a council workshop and discussed, do we want a campus type layout or do we want a, a courtyard? And uh, that was uh, a actually a surprising conversation for me. It ended up uh, different than what I expected, going more towards a campus type feel. With some transparency between the volumes. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it was kind of, it was uh, an interesting twist. This is a, a rendering that came forward in 2015 that we've seen that has, you know, perspective showing the, the location from the location of the windmill and kind of an overhead view looking north at, at what that orientation might be. And this actually shows a few changes that have occurred in the design. We moved the headworks uh, for some efficiencies and value engineering is, is, is part of uh, this rendering, or they show up in this rendering. So uh, we moved forward, and, and in September of 2015, uh, right about the time we were looking at the 60% cost estimate for the project, we looked at um, an alternate concept for the project and kind of did some public outreach. What do you think of one versus the other? And largely the community uh, came back with concept B, so that's what we've been moving forward with. You see here it shows the community room on it, but the, 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 the main point and takeaway is, is the, the architectural theme that's behind it was what was the important part of the decision. So this, I believe, is where I start handing it over to my friends here. Thanks, Joe. So I got I got you up to yesterday. Okay. <laughs> the rest should be kind of new and exciting, hopefully. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the park master plan that <clears throat> is being worked on. This is the uh, something the, the citizens advisory group or the CAG has been working with Steve from the city and um, Gil Williams to my left here in terms of doing a, an overall park master plan. We are kind of zooming in on that, that master plan um, and uh, addressing uh, not only the, um, the architecture of the buildings, but we're addressing the landscape architecture of the perimeter of the buildings. A little, a little more zoomed in, and again, we provided um, 11 by 17s and good quality 11 by 17s. It sort of are better images than what's on the screen, a little bit better, I'd say. But um, note on the left corner, uh, upper left corner is the administrative building and the maintenance building. There is a kind of a roundabout here and um, parking for the interpretive center and a plaza in the front yard and a water feature that actually uh, joins this future water. Um, Splash Park. Splash Park. <laughs> Uh, towards this this lookout element here so you can see how this has sort of come uh, a long way um, there's a little bit of a wetlands mitigation zone here and a stage in this area here if you can see my my mouse so the difference here is that there's a parking lot in this current location this has been downsized a little bit we've located parking in a number of other places around uh, the facility and within the master plan Stop me if, if you uh, have questions, please. Um, this, this is the overall site plan. These buildings are identified. I think some of the buildings you're going to see today are the administrative facility, which is sort of a, a, a dog leg. Next to the administrative facility is a maintenance facility. These buildings are slated to meet lead silver. Uh, this is the solids uh, dryer building. This is the secondary. This is that big hole in the ground now as part of this secondary um, project. Uh, blower, electrical, and this is the headworks in this location. Gates are here and here. Okay, everything else is sort of internal courtyard. As Joe talked about, um, the campus, um, or, uh, the campus idea was that the, the response was we want some transparency in this facility. So we want to be able to see um, through and see what's going on, but not necessarily everything. Um, so we've uh, tried to achieve that in the, in the current plan. 
the administrative facility, this is a, um, a building that is, uh, as I said, sort of a dog leg shaped building. There's no longer a community center on the, or a community room on the top floor. The elevator used to be in this location. This is really building services on the north side. There's a little uh, court internal with the emergency generator north of that. This is the interpretive center in this location. It's about 1,700 square feet. There is a conference room that opens up to the interpretive center uh, with sliding pocket doors. There's sort of a back corridor where tours would start in this interpretive center and go into the plant through this corridor. Um, and then coming south, this is the water quality laboratory, the, the sample receiving area. And then in this wing of the building, there is circulation from the outside. There's a, a, a public door in this location. Control room, little <coughs> map room next to that. Uh, may, uh, women's and men's restrooms and lockers. There is a wellness room here. There's a break room on this side and a little uh, patio area off the break room that will be enclosed by a little fence here. Um, and then offices face south. Offices face the plaza. There's three offices, one for the lab supervisor, two for the, for the, the plant. Um, uh, leads. Leads, yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a little parking zone here, and then uh, kind of a walk down a couple steps to the maintenance building. It's a little bit lower volume. There's a mezzanine in the maintenance facility. There is a, a maintenance office, and there is, um, these are uh, technical or um, tech spaces for maintaining uh, electronic equipment. In this zone, they're enclosed, they have to be kind of clean. There's a mezzanine above it, and the rest of it is maintenance facility. There'll be machines in there, rolling steel tables, that sort of thing. But it's been really downsized since where we started this project. Um, it seems to be adequate for what they need now, and we've kind of worked, worked through them. Questions so far? Yes, sir. A little wellness room, is that just some basic workout equipment, or what is that? First, um, first aid, largely. First aid. First aid, um, also lactation rooms, those sorts of things that are in these facilities these days. Okay, it's a private room. What is the line says monorail on the uh, right hand side, the line? A monorail is a, is a crane way. So um, in this overhead coiling door, somebody would back up a um, a flatbed truck there would be a piece of equipment on it it would be hoisted with the, the on the monorail and then brought ac across uh, above the ceiling brought across to tables in this location oh. in in lieu of a bridge crane which is more expensive and um, a little more flexible but it would drive the, the, the volume of this building up so monorail is a good a good um, compromise So latest renderings of the administrator building, um, these were, I hope this is no surprise to anybody <laughs> at this point. Um, we've been sending stuff <laughs> along and uh, I think the, the only thing that, that, that's new is we've added some of the landscaping and some, some of the stormwater areas here on the left hand side. But this is really the, the, the promenade. This is walking from Pioneer all the way down to um, the, the water's edge or the lookout. And uh, the interpretive center is, is in this location. The laboratory is in this location, which will be visible. And uh, very much in the motif of uh, a regional Pacific Northwest design, exposed wood beams on the outside, even though they are undercover, they are exposed uh, with this canopy element, some ideas on signage, which we'll talk about later. But um, this being covered, covered walkway in this location, also, uh, the, the, the start of a water feature that actually ends in the splash park next to the, um, the ramp going up to the interpretive center. So the, the people who work in this building really wanted a separate entry uh, to the interpretive center on this west side as opposed to this entrance here. So this one here will look more public. This one here will look a little more, more private so people can remain at work. Another view, uh, south elevation, this is the uh, administrative facility. This is the maintenance facility with these high clear story windows. Uh, some of the materials we're using, which we'll go over in detail, are this, uh, what we call this Oco skin material, which is a cement fiber wood look material. We've used this on several facilities now. It's kind of a hundred year facility uh, uh, material. 
very durable, but it, it, it does look like wood. Uh, brick on the <coughs> low, lower volumes in this building, and then you can see some of these, these screening and fencing elements, which are Corten or weathered steel. Uh, if you're familiar with weathered steel, Corten, anybody? It's, it's, it looks like it's rusting. It, it is, but it stops. <laughs> so uh, Corten is a, is a great material. We use it a lot. Um, but we'll get more into materials. Um, this idea or this view of the public plaza, um, there's some um, mounds and berms and you can get a sense of how the landscape architectural um, scheme has been sort of brought into this facility and enhances it, I think. Um, public plaza will be uh, uh, the start of the public plaza, which will be a place for, you know, farmers markets and car shows and that sort of thing. It's, 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 it's a lot of flat. Um, this being the, the water feature which flows this direction. Um, stormwater areas as well as this sort of undulating uh, regional contextual dune like coastal coastal coastal, coastal thank landscape. you and then um, one of the areas where we've got stormwater treatment and necessary kind of overflow for some of the, the flooding that's been going on there is in this area here and so we showed that with a you know, after a storm <laughs> it's probably not gonna look big storm yeah <laughs> uh, but you can see some of the roundabout areas here uh, the roundabout in this location and you know the the general roof forms of these facilities that actually uh, surround the, the the workings of the plant. Good so far. The uh, interpretive center, uh, an idea of signage for that for that particular volume. Um, this would be a ramp going up to it on the floor plan. There'd be a little vestibule entry there with a key fob going in. Um, there would be windows looking all the way through this facility in this location up the promenade. But here's that ramp. There's a water feature in the front. Some ideas of signage for that facility that we're coming up with. But that's sort of a, and, and also the, the, some of the fencing, which is these kind of robust sea channels that are mounted on the, on the base, which allows a degree of flex or, or transparency, but um, not, you know, uh, prison looking so it's, so. It's, it's probably better described as screening it's not true fence because it varies a lot Thank you. So yeah. it's very very um, variable as you move along there so it's it's meant to kind of emulate a coastal landscape so it's and there are different surveyors do you notice something that's missing mm -hmm. I, Those little <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention I that <laughs> The west facing flags for the west facing windows the reason i brought this oh, and and so good thank you um <laughs> the reason i brought this elevation and 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 um the floor plan associated with it is because we're, we're starting to talk to a, a, an exhibit planner that's going to be on this team or that is on this team and um you know ideally interpretive centers it, it, you have light zones and you have dark zones um, people that do museums like black boxes so it really doesn't need to have a huge amount of windows although we've taken the bright side and faced that south towards the water as well as the lab so these are smaller windows and if he wants a few more windows there but still we don't need really need the shading we did before because we've got this overhang in this location which actually leads you to that door from the promenade you see some of Gill's land landscaping and um, you know tree wells along this edge a little seat wall um, some of the lighting we're thinking about these are viewing windows we're also considering signage in these viewing windows that tells you what you're looking at this is a blower building this is an electrical building did I get that mixed up yeah thanks <laughs> and um, so in other words you're looking at something it's going to tell you what you're looking at uh, to be part of the process and I think you know windows in to see how this place works is actually going to help us um you know with with uh, public acceptance of this facility and and we're kind of excited about displaying some of that technology and some of that technology is actually pretty high technology so it's going to look nice and clean and organized but you can see some of the stormwater areas and the landscape elements also using corten in the landscape elements as well am i forgetting anything nope okay <coughs> And you're on the corner now, you're on this, these little key plans, I didn't make this clear. This is on the northwest corner. This is the, the blower building in this location. There's that viewing window you were just looking at. In truth, there's a building here right now, um, but we're gonna be looking at an area over here next. But you can see the quality of these buildings. 
the massing, um, some of the materials that are used. And we actually have a choice of materials for you to see in a little while. So it's, we'll get into that. Um, at one point there was, um, Joe, turbulence, that's a good word. You know, there turbulence in terms of the odor control facilities. These facilities were, um, instead of the biofilters being below grade, they were above grade. There was a lot of materials and there was a lot of process elements above grade. Um, that air actually comes underground into this facility and the access points for that odor control media is through these elements, which Gil came up with the idea of, you know, maybe these are lanterns of sorts. They're, we work those into the sort of lighting scheme. We remove these to get to the media every few years, I think. Carl, five years. Every five years. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, we've got, this is the, the border up against this is the border up against the uh, Wells Fargo Bank. And we've got a zone here that's um, also uh, considered stormwater landscaping as well as a viewing window. Just, yes, to, just to clarify, there's actually in another view, you'll see there's a strip of parking between that sidewalk you see and the Wells Fargo property. And that's a good segue into the next slide. We can come back to this if you wish. Um, these are some of Gil's drawings showing um, the idea for this Okay, this is turned around the other direction. So Wells Fargo is in this location, let's get oriented. And this is that odor control biofilter that's in this location. The idea of taking some of this area to include these, um, these process elements outside of the inside, the outside of the, the courtyard area, which was getting very uh, expensive in terms of um, stacking all of that process and mechanical equipment below grade and actually weaving that into the, you know, the landscape architecture and um, providing a parking lot that had an outlet or an inlet <clears throat> in this location. So this is Pioneer. This is a little sign in this location announcing that, that, that there is parking in this location. The promenade starts here on Pioneer. It goes along, along this way. So this is the design sketch. Thought I'd throw it in there because I thought it was really kind of a cool sketch. You explained a lot. Yes, sir. Where do you have? Uh, shown or odor control that that is part of the deep excavation right now no, no. That's what's the that distance between line. the deep excavation and our property it's just that section of the parking lot right it's about the, the existing feet. parking lot existing paved area right now the existing parking lot recently purchased from Wells Fargo right. is it's right here. from includes this entire area. It includes the row of parking on the north side all the way to the edge of the property. The deep excavation is is that right line right here. there. Okay. That's 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 okay. Right. So this is the property recently purchased. Okay. Deep excavation is about ten feet from the south uh, the north <coughs> property line to our, our south property, you know, where we got most of our well, this is headwards here, and this is this is some of this excavation has been added back, so that's not as deep as this area here, but trivial. And that total L of parking, that will satisfy that 46 spots that we... Oh, it is going to. Yeah. 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 There's not quite enough fun. So, in the odor control capsules or sections oh. in there, that's discharging at the top of those little uh maybe i can start to answer that the, oh. the box there with the, the lanterns on showing dashed yeah. there is a buried concrete vault that has media in there the the lights and the hatches the those are simply for access to remove media every few years and replace it the, the air comes the out place. of that box structure yeah. under, out, out of the top. No, no. it mm -hmm. comes comes this through very pipe. It comes from right. from the facility, very pipe into this right. box structure. Right. Through this box structure, very pipe over to the carbon okay. vessels here. These carbon vessels are behind the screen wall. And that's where the air is exhausted from okay. the top of those cars. So what's what's the purpose of the lanterns then? What, what's the function of that so-called? We need hatches on this concrete structure to access and remove and replace the media periodically. Okay. All right. So there's 
decorative hatches, light they're roughly posts, they, if you will. They're five foot square, right? It's yeah. Roughly yeah. those hatches. So they so just be sitting there. Seal that area. Yeah. We're Part trying to keep it from looking like a big box. Yeah. So we just added some. Well, it's also going to include stuff too. safety is an issue along that corridor. So lighting is, they would add, add to the lighting scheme. <clears throat> but you can see, let's go back. That is that area that's screened off that will have the carbon vessels that Carl was talking about. <clears throat> um, another, another perspective of how that would potentially look in these, you know, vertical elements are marching along this edge. And you can see how that um, sidewalk actually draws you through here and it's pretty open through here um, with this with this new property boundary so it's going to feel a little bit safer than 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 previous uh, ideas and that that that's more or less that entry into that parking lot is at the intersection of Bay Shore and City Beach that so kind of creates almost a four-way stop there that's a one way yes yeah. Yeah. Oh. That intersection, you mentioned that, that specific intersection, and I know I've heard Joe, I think, say this in the past, it's kind of a mess right now. There's like, you know, a stop sign coming this way, but none coming that way, and people get confused there all the time. Is there some sort of plan for that traffic flow, maybe, so a change, if anything could be done to make that intersection? We're, we're working better? on a way to... To make, make it, it better. With this I don't know that we've come to a resolution yet, but well, we've got to have some that's ideas. That's why we designed that as a one way. So coming off of City Beach Bay Shore into that parking lot instead of having people trying come to both the ways. Yeah. yeah. And navigate that intersection. Kind of, yeah. Not my favorite. I, I go through every day. So this is an improvement because you have people coming in and out. So mm -hmm. right, right in on the is going to eliminate a lot of the conflicts. But it's still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, alternate color options. I'm sorry. Could you have a search you back up? So, right in only, but what about the people exiting the wells? The, that, there's another driveway north of that where they come out of the drive through right. color. It's right there. So, there's, there's this exit, and then there's the, the wells exit just north of that. We still have some work yeah. to do on the intersection to make it better. I, I have some ideas, and I know they have some ideas. We, we have yet to get them all put together. We've had lots of ideas. On yeah, I know. We've, we've got <laughs> everything from roundabouts to, yeah. I mean, we've, we've tried a lot of different things. The thing things. is, once you start with that intersection, it's not too far to the other intersection. I know. It just snowballs. It snowballs, so anyway, it's not too soon. It'll be improved. Alternate colors. Um, I brought a couple of different brick colors. This is the base color we're thinking about, the, the, the darker color behind. I should have used a different color. Uh, there's trees in front. Gil? Sorry. Would you, would you take those trees away? <laughs> um, and so the base color is this. We're thinking about also an alternate color, which is a, which is a lighter brick, which looks like that. And we'll show you couple other versions of that keeping this same product on top which has very little color options available I will pass these around so you can see what this is and how robust this material is but um, we have a couple different options to kind of get your feedback on here it is with this elevation this is going to look a little more um, a little more familiar the interpreter center that's the brick part everything else in this is called Oco skin that is the white brick color it's a little bit modeled don't know what your opinion is, but um, should I just go back and forth? Yeah, okay. Now you can go back to the. We can vote. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was looking down when you switched it. And I just That's okay. It. That's why I put these back to back like this. I, I'm not sure these actually, with those trees in the way. Those trees. Those trees. So anyway, and then um, we can come back to this. And then, so here's those two color options in the material boards, and this is that darker brick color, and this is the lighter brick color. This is what the wall cladding called Oco Skin actually looks like. It's, it's really a durable material. We like using it. There's kind of an up close of that material. Um, wood soffits, wood brackets and soffits, exposed wood will take on sort of this character. Um, this 
core 10 steel, which is for the screen walls, mm -hmm. I say that right? Mm -hmm. uh, basically is, it, you know, it looks like rusty metal, but it actually goes with everything and it's, and it's a very durable material and it, it contrasts well against the, the materials we're using, which are kind of finished materials. Metal standing seam roof, um, kind of a, uh, you know, zinc look to it. If you, and it will stay this color and it's very durable as well. Again, I'll pass that around when we're ready. Um, interior walls would be a couple different options. Um, this lighter CMU, which we like because it, it's a honed finish. It actually looks a little more clean. One of the things we're kind of concerned about as you, as you look through these facilities and their transparency is just uh, how clean and high tech it looks. So the signage, the exterior, the landscaping, and the interior should look you know, fairly well kept and clean compared to everybody's idea of, of, a, of a plant like this. So some examples uh, also shown of Oco skin, metal windows, and light brick versus dark brick. Um, we are providing an interiors material board, but these are kind of the, this is sort of the beginning of that conversation. Uh, the interpretive center would have um, exposed beams, wood. Um, the furniture would either be some of this furniture, which harkens to some of Gill's ideas outside, or we would use a lot of the oak. We've got some plans to use that oak. I've been up to see the Gary Oak, and um, there's a lot of wood there. Uh, there's a lot of ways to use it. One is seating, one's a table. There's a, we've got a, a, a book from the, the guy from, I forgot his name. Brad. Brad from Mo Carver. He, he, so we're very much in, in alignment with some of the, uh, the ideas he's come up with there. Uh, polished concrete interior lobby, um, administration building. So this is rift saw. This is oak casework. Uh, might be Gary Oak if we can get enough rift. And this is, if you're into wood like I am, uh, this rift is very clean, sort of vertical lines, not a lot of knots or flakes. That's why when I use a lot of oak like this. Um, but in the conference room and in the offices, this would be carpet tile. Um, very, very durable. We use this a lot in offices and um, it, it, it wears very well. And some, some ideas of how you can pattern this so that it sort of breaks up the monotony of a, of a, of a sea of carpet. But also in the office areas, sort of these strip fluorescence in, 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 as opposed to two by four fixtures. Um, this is, a, I think, more quality look. Um, and with the ceilings that we specify, this is a kind of a nice finished ceiling um, element. And there's just really not a lot of ceilings in this building, but we'd, we'd like to, you know, go a little higher quality on the, on the lighting and the ceilings. Uh, but everything else is rubber tile flooring in the corridors, um, rubber tile accent flooring in the break rooms. Um, yes, back. Just a second, I had sure. a question for you on the interpretive lobby on the polished concrete floor. Mm -hmm. Is that terrazzo? Looks like it, but it's not. It's concrete. It's concrete. Is it skid proof? We have a lot of rain in this. Finish is a big deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. finish is a big deal. And we, it, we couldn't, it couldn't be super polished. There would have to be some level of abrasive to abrasive to, abrasiveness to it. Right? Um, you said fluorescent lights. Yeah. Isn't there any way to put LED? Yeah, we're using LEDs throughout the plant. Uh -huh. um, the color rendition of some of these fluorescent fixtures is better, and okay. uh, they're also very energy efficient. We have to meet lead silver requirements, right. so in general, this building will beat the energy code by about 35%. Okay. Um, just color rendition is a big deal for us. I, I mean, it should be for you um, in terms of the, the, the lab color, the colors in the lab, colors in the inter interpretive center, and the colors in the administrative areas. So. Um, some of the LEDs now, um, they're nice, they're very efficient. The, the color rendition is, is not as warm as we'd like. Okay. Um, kind of bland board here. It's kind of hard to, to visualize this, but um, floor tiles and uh, benches in the locker room, some of this uh, in the laboratory, which is epoxy resin countertops. They're about an inch thick. Uh, they're really durable countertops. They used to be only available in black. 
they suck the light out of the room. We like using some of these gray colors. Coupling that with um, what is, is the same wood, but it's, also, it's just laminate. It's washable, it's durable, it's also sanitary in a laboratory environment. So the lower casework is gonna look like wood. The upper casework is gonna look um, in, in uh, sort of a bright color white. And some of the laboratory um, ceiling areas, countertops, um, for restrooms and break rooms is, is, is laminate, um, but not extravagant finishes by any stretch of the imagination, but durable and clean and sort of contemporary looking. Again, we're gonna provide boards for the exterior and the, and the interior, um, and you guys will have those to post wherever you want them. Maybe it'd be a good way to get people to come down and on our Tuesday or our uh, Monday uh, yeah. contractor or Cookies with the contractors, what I like to call oh, cool. it. But <laughs> come down and see the boards and look down at the construction okay. site. I have to buy some cookies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's leftover from the last CAG meeting problem. This. <laughs> um, they're a little crunchy. We'll, you know, we'll go get some. We'll run downstairs yeah. and get some more. So let's talk about landscaping materials real quick. Go. So that, and keeping with the coastal theme, that, that was. The, kind of the driving principle between the plant palette and the materials palette in the landscape. And it, it, it manifests itself throughout the park as we start to look at the integration as one to create continuity across the whole 28 acres. And so taking the building and you saw some of those aerials and those perspectives on trying to create continuity throughout that whole landscape. Not, not just the, the plant part, but the building as well. And tying it all together and so that by in the exterior we use what I would like to have is a very simple palette without getting too much out there simple things like the wood benches that that Jeff referred to um, and then using taking this weathered steel or corten steel as we talked about and creating uh, raised planters with it what one of the parts of the lead certification is is treating and dealing with the stormwater and you can see how we can take some of this Corten planters here and, and taking the water off the roofs and integrating it into the landscape and um, having that coastal landscape. Um, and it might also influence some of your thinking about the colors of the building. Um, it's gonna be a very light, um, I'll keep using the word coastal. I won't go beyond <laughs> that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's gonna have grasses on it. And so it's gonna have a very kind of airy feel. So you can imagine that with a backdrop of a, a dark or a light brick building and the contrast there, what, what might be appropriate. Um, but, you know, simple uh, weathered steel or, or in, this, in this particular place we use concrete, but I don't anticipate seeing that out there. I was just trying to illustrate how we're gonna capture the stormwater and create some sort of during rain an active feature that might uh, create some interest um, you know how we convey the water these are you know uh, walk on surfaces so the water is conveyed underneath perhaps across the promenade to the larger uh, enhanced wetland area and then this coastal um, type planning palette you can see a lot of familiarity in here um, this goes back to the screening as well, going back up to the top row. Um, some of the side elements in this, we worked with uh, Jeff's group to come up with a screening material that would kind of blend with the landscape. And so that's why I call it screening and not fencing because it is not consistent. And there's, I think maybe the next slide shows some of that look. And so it's something that would, I think, be reminiscent of what you might see at the, co at the coast where you, you get bits and pieces of screens and fences and things. So we'll see that in the next slide. And then the tree palette here, this is kind of our primary um, promenade tree, the black tuplo. Um, very great contrasting colors um, in the fall, so you get a, a, a lot of seasonal variety out of that. But the rest is the shore pine, the, the Pacific madrone, where we can find them, are I think pretty um, typical coastal type trees. There's not, to be quite honest, a lot of trees out there. We're gonna keep it very kind of an open view to the harbor um, so that I think a lot of the plantings in, will be low except in select black places where we want to frame views or or create some shade and things like that so the next slide Can I ask a question yes the black tuplo. 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 Um, what are the roots going to do the promenade I mean so I mean it's out. a good question yeah, and it, 
yeah. <laughs> can you bury it deep enough so it's not going to come up and crop it? Yeah, no, there, there are ways to um, put bio barrier in. There, there are ways we can eliminate the, um, there's different ways to prepare the soil to get the roots and, and deep watering that, and that will get the roots going downward. Um, so yeah, a lot of heaved sidewalks you see are from very old installations of trees with no bio barrier. So there are ways to keep the roots out from under those places. So that's a good question. She's going to hold you to that. So. We did a lot of replacement downtown and in front of the senior center. I mean, so it's like, okay, it's going to look great, beautiful, but I don't want someone complaining that the roots coming up on right. a brand new promenade. Thank you. Next slide. <laughs> yeah. Are you able to successfully transplant the madrone? Very tricky. I've done it in in a couple of instances. It's very tricky. That's um, you know, and madrones aren't good in mass. They're more of a focal tree. So if we can get a couple of specimen, one or two, I, I think it's worth um, trying it. And then the other uh, question <coughs> is, you don't have to go to the site plan, but you indicate that you have uh, basins or you have water basins, wetlands type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, in that park right now, we have a, a saltwater pond. We do not have a mosquito problem down there. Are you creating breeding ponds for mosquitoes? How it's, do you plan it, to control it's that? Gonna, there's going to be an active inflow. It's going to be a flushing mechanism, basically. And we're going to need it. It's very functional in terms of its flood control purposes. But the idea is that it's ebbing and flowing on a regular basis, so there won't be stagnant. Well, rainwater coming off the system? We're talking about the water treatment around the plant. I'm, I'm talking about around the plant where you right. have, you're dealing with rainwater and stormwater right. issues. Right, so that's, it, it, it's to the extent it can infiltrate, it'll infiltrate, and it goes around and then there's overflow. So it's gonna, it, it okay. won't stand, it won't stand. It's, it's not designed It's a very dynamic system, water. yeah. So you right. may have the main standard to the right Yeah. This is. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, yeah. uh, it's okay. Um, well, because I, I didn't see we're coming back to the plants. Um, the the planter um, boxes in areas where you have sort of these grasses and plants. Do those require a lot of maintenance? Like I can just see, you know, um, I don't know. I don't want to cause a burden on our more um, right. necessary on our city and our parks so department. So the, the pallet is if. It's meant to be a natural pallet, so it wouldn't require the specific maintenance. Like a, it would biannual maintenance. You know, where you want to come in and clean it. I think more than anything, it might be you could, you know, litter or something blowing in there, and and there being trash out of it. Yeah, but the actual like that. growth. Like yeah, like and having put something to around this that just grew out of control, and we were constantly right. having to cut it back or prune it. Um, no, it wouldn't be anything. It'd be probably more akin to the um, the the these types of grasses here that you kind of want a longer, a longer, more, but then their mature height is what you're seeing there. So that's the, that's the ultimate look you're after. There, there will be there some, will be maintenance. some maintenance. Yeah. yeah. There's just, you can't prevent that. And, and we've been talking, having conversations with the um, parks folks here in yep. terms of planting materials that are very similar to this in the master plan. So and it's it, been an active discussion. So one of their big concerns is having these leaf dropping trees because I mean if it, you know the tupelo will go join it's a deciduous tree so it lose its leaves and one of the questions about you know the water feature being just a big catchment for leaves and a maintenance issue so what we're our, the way we're addressing that is making the water feature a very shallow water feature it's not a typical pool and so it's more of a, a conveyance and something that's very I think almost accessible from the the promenade that so you're not getting leaves collecting in there that it's it's kind of it's moving on a regular basis it's not a pool so sort of shimmering thing. water yeah answer my question when you started talking about dropping the leaves i just yeah. hope uh, that the one on the left we're not planning on having a whole bunch of those are we we're, and actually they start about midway from the facility back to pioneer so that there's that that's the kind of the identifying tree along the promenade, but they don't go all the way to the water. They only so go about a bunch of trees. Pardon me? There'd be more than one or two trees. Yeah, along that promenade. So there'd be lots of leaves. 
Uh, and yes, and one time a year there would be. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ten, there's 10 trees along that property. What about the rest of them? Are those leaf droppers also? I've, I'm figuring this were ta these were taken at different times of year. They are. The madrones, um, not deciduous. The oak is deciduous. The shore pine, not deciduous. And the magnolia is not deciduous. Okay. Now this, bear, there may be variations of bear, these as well. Bear in mind the, the parts division, it's got to clean it up. Yes, sir. When you're planning. Yep. Thank you. So this is kind of the screening study that you can see. It's it's a variation. It's kind of a a a it starts out next to the building, more building like, and as we get into the landscape, it kind of starts to spread out a little bit, but it still provides the screening we're looking for. So we go from the, the wider uh, panels close to the building. As we get closer, there's this, just this migration into a, a thinner panel. It's still semi-transparent, but it also provides the screening we're looking for. And this was just to have a more informal beach appearance instead of something that was a built you know, uh, you know, so it's to give it a little more of a random appearance. And what I think you have to imagine with these screen pictures is having these sorts of grasses, these coastal grasses and things in front of them. I think you saw them in some of Jeff's earlier slides. So you can get, there's a really nice feel as they mix into the landscape. So they, they will look less uniform and you know, you're gonna have undulating mounds in front of them with grasses on them and so I think they're going to look very beach like. This is also the white brick. So here's another example of the white brick versus the dark brick. There's an example um, just an application of the Corten steel. Um, these panels it's not what we're proposing but you can see and you may recognize the material from these slides what, what it looks like. You see it a lot of places these days. <clears throat> We're getting towards the end. Um, this is uh, viewing windows. This, this is on the north uh, side of the facility. <clears throat> We're looking into the second area, area and um, you can see some panels with signage below. You have a, <clears throat> you have a viewing window, you have uh, signage panels and essentially a place where people can actually look into the process and this is one of those locations again we are working with uh, just started working with someone who's going to help us with the panels the message and um, the graphics associated with this but this is an idea of the largest viewing window which is facing into uh, the secondary area there'll be some nice machines and things like that to look at and you can see through the buildings with the Claire stories above but again some of the some of the Corten steel as elements Gil on the lower right here um, gives you an idea how that product is used in the landscape. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so let's talk a little bit about signage. <coughs> These are a little dark in this room, <coughs> but um, <coughs> this idea of badging the corners with uh, Oak Harbor's emblems. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and um, it says Oak Harbor Clean Water Facility. Let's, let's go to another one. Can't see it really well there either, but here, you can. Um, this is on the Interpretive Center. <coughs> and here's the idea of taking the sails and actually, because I, I really like those sails <coughs> as part of your logo and actually making them part of the corner of the building. <coughs> These being letters that stand off of this um, siding material and um, <coughs> stainless steel letters that stand, you know, two, two inches out. A nice shadow line, but it looks very quality. So we're thinking about that kind of thing in terms of signage and welcome your comments, obviously, on that. <coughs> well, there's a few optional slides which have the entire elevations of these facilities. <coughs> this is the one you're most used to looking at right here, which is the lower electrical, the screen wall and um, the interpretive center and this is from the other side this is the other gate this is the solids facility this is thank you <laughs> I'll be better in a moment bottom one is looking from the Little League baseball fields that's what the view on City Beach in the foreground there <coughs> but um, let's go back to signage just to kind of back up again badging kind of on the corners um, that's the solids facility Gil was just talking about 
that is the Headworks facility on the northeast corner. Um, but the idea of just announcing this facility and not necessarily telling you what you're looking at, you can go up to the viewing windows, it'll tell you. But the idea of saying that this is a city-owned property, this is something we're taking care of, it's quality, it's, it's contemporary, it's, it's new, and it's clean. So that's the ideas we're, we're throwing out. Um, with that, I think I'm done presentation. I'll send these around. <coughs> Light brick, we'll just send them in pieces. Dark your brick. Screen slide, and you're saying that it's um, thicker, and then it turns and it's skinnier. If you look at a painting, sometimes there's a color that takes your eye and you start following it and it takes you throughout the whole painting in a way the screening does, but yeah. I like the variable of the different, I guess, shape or widths because in a sense it breaks the monotony. It's not just a big thick old fence, you can't right. see anything, but it breaks it up, it's different. It's not like you can measure, measure, you know. Right. And, and so I really like that field plus with the grasses in front of it. But if you look at it, you're going from your building and it's taking your eye and then it's and it's showing you a variety so your eye is just following it. So it's like it's the building is a painting. And, and it'll and be so I like that good feel or that idea that someone came up with. I think that is really quality. It'll be interesting as you walk next to it as well because mm -hmm. you'll you'll go from a solid form that as you get close to it you're going to be able to see through it and mm -hmm. as you pass by it becomes solid again <coughs> so it'll change along the whole thank you mayor pro tem um i'm on page i'm on the aerial view uh, the towards the front towards the front and you have you show the water feature along the side of the building um, and also on the very front page, you're showing that water feature flowing from the building all the way to the shore. Um, is that processed water? No. Um, you know, I'm referring to the very front page, and then also I think one, two, one two, three, 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 good. Four, go to five, the second. Yeah, yeah that one right there. Up of is the, that up the is that processed water? No. Sir, what what's the source of that water? It would be right now. It's potable water. This is because it's integral with the play, the splash pad. Kids will be playing in it, so it needs to be potable. Uh, the lot. That's the Lacey Olympia uh, There's water water. facility. Mm -hmm. They got a swimming pool permit for that facility, so they recycle that through a chlorination cleaning system. Like just similar to a swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would we consider that rather than pumping? Uh, potable, potable water, water through there all the time? Oh, it'd be, I guess the source of the water would be initially potable, but it'd be a recirculating oh, okay. system, yeah. Okay. So, so well, that, we can track that down. That's a whole other level of permitting to be able yeah, to right. do that. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we do that. I'm just curious what the thought was on that. And that water will be circulating through there for the splash park? The splash park would be on a separate circulation. Okay. And then in that trench next to the building, would you have like small fountains that bubble up through that? that it could be. We're working on the kind of the ultimate design for that right now. I th one of the ideas was to, it's just to have it, the water come out without having bubblers. Okay. I mean, we have to have, we have to reintroduce the water once it's circulated and pumped back in. We have to introduce it somehow. And the idea was that it would flow kind of evenly okay. across. And what we wanted to do is create a, a negative of, of for instance, a, to, a, topo a topographic map. Right. So it would be inlaid. So you'd have what would appear to be to topographic contours coming down. So the water would fill at different levels oh, okay. and then meander okay. down, okay. The, down the corridor. Kind of like a fish ladder type. Of kind of like that, yeah. Sort of yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, I noticed in your uh, plan view of the park, other than the supposedly we're going to have a splash park, there's no introduction of fountains or anything. You know, a lot of areas that I have visited where they have fountains, it creates this this atmosphere of something's really happening mm -hmm. if there, even mm -hmm. if there aren't a lot of people in there. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we may want to consider, like even in the middle of our lagoon, um, to have have some kind of a, a fountain water feature um, I think in those areas? The lagoon, I've, 
and it might be something worth looking at. It's an aeration device in the lagoon yeah. that would just keep the water circulating. Because once tide goes out, you're stuck with the water you have. It's always static, though, when the exactly. tide is Exactly. It, yeah. it might be a good idea to keep it keep circulating. It, yeah. yeah. That's where I could see it. The other places, perhaps, and we don't have it budgeted right now, is over off of Beeksma, off of that entry into right. the park. It's kind of a prominent... That was identified as the front door to the park, the, the main entry, the grand entry. And so there may be something, we're, we've kind of enhanced that wetland feature there. But you and also talked about possibly moving the windmill into that area. Correct, and it could be integral with that. You know, we're, we've looked at, if you look at this image here, at the, at the end of the promenade, the idea of, of point to the wind structure down at the bottom there, that we have a focal element there okay. that's at the, at the terminus of that promenade that would be a more contemporary in, wind structure it could be oh I didn't point know. that out yeah, yeah I think it shows up in one of these it does it does it's right there it's, it's really clear I, somebody put it, a really? tree in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> where's it go it's like right it's there, right there. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful isn't it <laughs> well the idea, the idea is that the 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 windmill uh, actually gets relocated from the middle of the park to the park entrance as kind of an iconic thing as for Windjammer Park and then this would be replaced with a wind, uh, you know, an actual kinetic uh, wind sculpture of sorts that generates electricity. And we'd see that in the interpretive center because there's always wind on that point. Mm -hmm. So there's a kind of a twirling device behind the tree there. <laughs> and um, is that like a helix? Yes. Wind yeah. Turbine? Yeah. 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 They're, kind of, they're really kind of cool to look yeah. at. So. Mm -hmm. so that's how you're going to produce the electricity for the lighting in the park? For the entire city. Very <laughs> 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 how much can do it. <laughs> I, I, yeah. You know, it, it's probably going to be spinning all the time, but uh, I really wonder how much actual electricity it would, it would produce. So usually when you have these things, they, they're not consistent, so you either sell it back to the grid or you put it into a battery system. So we haven't gotten that far. You got any suggestions? We're listening. Charge your cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put them above head height. Okay? Yeah. 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 So it doesn't hit you? Okay. Mr. Campbell, do you have a question? I just want to make a statement. I like your concept of, for the signs. I think that's a good idea. Uh, when you were flashing dark color, light color, dark color, light color on the picture up there, I prefer the light color. Okay. How about, well, since we're on that, how about other council opinions light dark yeah i i too i naturally always prefer a lighter color just my eye likes lighter colors mm -hmm. but i worry my only worry with a lighter color being outside and being in our park um, and being so close to the water is how, how clean would it look mm -hmm. always and heaven forbid if um, damage was done to it if it was vandalized um you know uh, would it be more tempting to do that on a lighter color? It would be harder to clean up, um, and would it stay looking that nice for very long? <laughs> you know, and that would be my only concern with a lighter color. Um, so that's why I would probably, I would probably think a darker would be better. But seagulls are going to mark this facility. It will be. Yeah, and they're sort of about that. sort of the yeah. white color. I mean, yeah. that's the other thing to consider here is that you know they're not going to yeah. be clean until this, yeah. the, the we're not going to be cleaning these buildings on a on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. The rain is going to clean them off. Um, there's going to be a sealer on the brick, and uh, probably some graffiti coating at the base. But um, but yeah, that's the other environmental factor here is that the birds are going to poop on our buildings. Well, the modeling kind of helps to camouflage some of that <laughs> that dirtiness, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. On the sketch, um, the up above, it looks like it has different shades. It does. It does? That material there? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's a little model looking. It's lighter and darker. Okay. Yeah, and that's this. Because I like that varying. Yeah, that's this really material nice. here, yes. Okay. It's not all super consistent. Well, there's the application right next to it. Right there. Yeah. It's brick color. I've seen the brick color on, on building residences in Texas. Mm -hmm. They're more. Uh, like darker that. colors. What would be the plan here in Pacific Northwest, you know, Harbor? I have seen, I haven't seen much of the brick colors here. The no, you know, this is, 
you're seeing in a lot of buildings in the Pacific Northwest, you are seeing um, a lot of darker palettes. And um, the idea is that the darker palettes look a little richer. And darker palettes meaning dark brick, dark windows, and dark flashing and dark roofs. Um, and it is, um, uh, it, it's, it's, you're seeing it on a lot of buildings at this point. Um, at this point, we're got, I think what we want to do is design this building so it doesn't look like it's going after a trend. It is sort of timeless design. We're going for that. And any one of these colors, I think, the white or the dark is contrasted with other things, including the landscaping. So we can live with either one. We don't really, I mean, if you're asking for our opinion, you either one, either no, we're color. no we, we like them both. We've done buildings using this brick uh, on both light and dark. Yeah. I think Mr. Survey just got the question. Just commenting on the color thing, you know, I would tend in the Northwest to want to go lighter, yet everything I'm looking at visually, and maybe it's because you said it seems richer, I don't know, I would tend towards the darker color. The seagull thing gives me pause, uh, but I do think the, the darker color just looks a little richer, especially with the Corten. I really like the Corten steel out of all of this. Well, um, these, and, these and my sorry, just last thought. You know, we look at I think it's Skagit Valley College and some of their remodels. The lighter brick to me feels, no offense to anyone, but a little 70s. Mm -hmm. You saw a lot of that. You know, churches and institutional buildings that came out that used that lighter color. And I'm just going to go back to that view. Yeah, because the brick in most of these buildings, I'm, I'm showing you the, the interpretive center, and the brick in these buildings is really um, up, you know, <clears throat> 10 or 12 feet. It's, it's the base of the building. And um, it, it, is, it is, you know, you, you see a lot of the brick. So it's a big decision to make because it really does change the look. Well, being the base, would it really get pooped on that much? And isn't it covered in a lot of places? <laughs> I mean, isn't it covered by eaves in a lot of, I mean, there it, it doesn't is. look like it is it in is. the others. It looks like it, the birds would have to like, come at an angle and really have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> they're, usually, they they're usually moving. I know they're bad. <laughs> I, mean, I know they are bad. Sounds like a thing from Mythbusters or something. It doesn't yeah. prove that out. But um, I, I mean, you, you do see, you, you see it all over buildings. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. If it's not up high, it, you probably get less of it. Good news is the rain comes at 45 degrees when the wind yeah, blows. Yeah, no kidding. So, there you go. Yeah, when the wind blows. Yeah. This design uh, through the concerted efforts of the companies on the lower end. Yes. Yeah. MWA Architect, yes. Arolla, Greenworks, and of course, no carbon. <laughs> it's been a real collaboration. Collaboration. Yes. Really nice. Another thing, I don't know that in mind that there will be other architecture in the park there's going to be restrooms and kitchens and ideally it would emulate whatever's kind of going on here um, what is really going to be nice is when you stand out at the edge with the the water behind you looking in you see all these roofs and they are uglier than heck and they've got bob wire and they've got um Netting. Air air conductors on top. I mean, they've got all this machinery on top, and ours is smooth and beautiful and has a great line to it. And to me, that's exciting because when you stand back there now, you see the building, but on the roof, you see all this added stuff, and it's just really in, in any coastal ugly. community. And, and Chad behind me is probably chomping a bit to talk about this thing that he found, um, but I'm going to talk about it, Chad. <laughs> Oh, okay, so there is there's there's standing seam roofs on these elements here. Um, there's also some parapet walls um, to sort of break up the mass here to match your city code, and we have a we have a product that actually has um, um, the parapets themselves will be energized a little bit. There's there's a little voltage that goes through them, so you you don't want to land on it. It doesn't kill the birds. It's it's humane. But it's one of those products, it's not spikes, it's not some of that nasty stuff that you see. Um, so this is one of the later products. That balanced against a, a laser plan we had. <laughs> that, I, that I think that, I, that, I think that uh, the, your, your Navy base might not like um, because it would sort of cruise around the perimeter with these laser devices and it works really well. But I think this product is, is gonna help keep the birds off the building. 
You can see yes, sir. it there. Um, it appears that on the downhill slope side of those buildings, you have concealed gutters. Is that really what you're doing with the standing seam roof? They're not concealed, but how are you treating the runoff? How you are you go into gutters. Part you, you go into gutters on the edges. Okay, they will be on the edge. Okay. Well, on the low end. yeah, on the low end. Um, Chad, do you want to? Talk well, about you point to the one right there. The Here? gutter. Yeah. yeah, so it drains to that line, it drains to that line, okay. and then that gutter dumps onto that adjacent roof. So it's right. surface mounted. Yes. Okay. And then it drains onto the flat roof, which then drains into the bar as well. Now go go to the other two buildings up there by the uh, yeah. that area there. So you have you have gutters picking up the water on that building? Yeah, the, the, see how you have the, 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 the pitch, the double pitch roof there. Here, yeah, yeah that yeah. one and that one. Yep. So you're you're handling that with surface. Uh, There'll be gutters on the edges. They'll okay. be built into the fascia on the edge. Yes. Okay. They're not concealed. Okay. That's your concern, right? Well, yeah. No, you know, I'm I'm just curious what you're doing because the the rendering here looks like they're concealed the, or something. Yeah, it's not real clear, but um, we. Th this is a corrosive environment, and we're. Um, we stay out of court <laughs> with our buildings very successfully and we, we detail the heck out of those things. So um, wa water management is a big deal for us. And if you'd like to look at the details, we can make them available. Thank you. I like in general the coastal theme. <coughs> My concern would be the same thing Ms. Wassinger stated though is, you know, it's next to a fairly modern looking, even though it's trying to be, you know, fit in, it's still a very modern, building and I just envision unfortunately a mess of grass and dandelion and the occasional blackberry that starts growing in there and, and realizing all landscaping requires some maintenance to whatever degree we can make it low maintenance and look you know stand the test of time because even once or twice a year to get crews in there for our parks department is going to be a lot mm -hmm. of work considering what they're taking on right now. The other thing, and I think you joked about, this is right after a heavy rain or a flood, those pockets of water. Right. Those concern me. I mean, it's the same mosquito thing that Mr. Holmberg touched on. Any standing water is an issue. I understand. And then, and bear in mind, this is a, it was more of a graphic representation. Um, right. I wouldn't anticipate ever really there being, especially the ones adjacent to the building, that amount of water in there. Um, it's more um, for immediate event conveyance and and treatment, and so it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't reside there. Okay. There's no. It's it's moving through. It's um, it's used as part of the flood control strategy as well. Since right. We, okay. Well, so the one on the left is if you go on the right side of the promenade, the stuff adjacent to the building. Yeah. You'd, yeah. Those are mostly dry. Yeah, they're dry all the time. You would yeah. never see it like that. I think maybe that's the. Uh, a poor graphic representation of what kind of how that functions in there. Okay. Um, another comment: the biofilter access hatches. Totally understand their purpose. They seem like pretty significant features on that side of the building. From that representation, go to, go to the hand sketch. Especially the next one. Next one. Next one. Yeah, that one. If you throw, you set at the base. They're five by five. The, the the hatches are. Hatches. So by the time you put the monolith on top of that and put seating around it, is that not eight by eight, ten by ten at the base? Yeah, I don't think there'd be seating around the, and these are more um, statue or art type elements in the landscape that potentially could shed light. We're still working out the details on what those might look like. If you go to the slide prior to this, there's a little a quick sketch of here you know how they're more of a you know they're graduated they're they're um where's our pointer? they're narrow or wider at the bottom and then we we kind of narrow them up as you go up they're more like a oblique so um thinking about what those might look like and even on the the one on the right the little hand sketch there on the right being maybe one of the lower hatches, so there's there's some continuity between these, and there there doesn't need to be, again, another graphic representation. It you know there doesn't need to be that many in the landscape. They could be, but they could be 
one of those elements in the park that kind of creates that continuity. Do, can we go back a slide? Yeah. Do we need to go vertically? Could they stay low and you accomplish a similar lighting with some kind of up lighting on the building or would that be too too prominent then on the building? No go, well, that shot, I mean, right. do we need them vertically or is that just because you want to put lights on? Um, vertically, so they stand out, so they're focal elements. Um, they don't have to be. They, again, this is, it's very conceptual at this point. Yeah, they're not detailed, so what are you thinking? I just think, you know, I can't, and granted they're white there, so they're really, there's a lot of contrast, but yeah. I just have a hard time envisioning it's going to look like a row of, you know, monoliths. Or, to me, it just, it's, it's out of place. It's way too mm -hmm. linear, way too big. It causes or, it, it's almost too... And it grabs a lot of attention, yeah. and if we can make just hatch covers that are lifted off yeah. and still have some minimal lighting or some up lighting on some trees, I think it would look gorgeous. Uh, and still break up that facade along there. We can, um, I think the detail on that will be, is gonna work out in the next probably two to three months, <coughs> what, those, what those will actually become. Yeah, just along that thought, I like the look, you know, when I go down and you see some of the different malls where they uplight. Have we got any uplighting on any of the trees or the building itself? Uh, uh, no. Our, our, our landscaping thus far is basically pedestrian oriented. Um, Around the, circ the hardscape circulation. Okay. Would it be lighting on the, on the signage? So considering the promenade, might it be possible to uplight those trees? Can we work Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that would be very attractive going <laughs> down through there at night. Um, to the promenade, what? promenade view, yeah. So have those uplit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have some lights in the, um, the canopies above those viewing windows as well. Okay. And then last but not least, uh, Mr. Almer touched on the reclaimed water running down through that trough. I would really like to make a statement that we are doing something, and I've said it a bunch of times, that our park eventually gets irrigated mm -hmm. with some kind of purple pipe offshoot. That, we're, that it is a statement that, hey, we feel confident enough about this water, and granted it may have to go through one final. I know we have UV treatment at the end, mm -hmm. but if it's recirculated some kind of chlorinated treatment but to truly use that water rather than just discharging it and use potable water that gets reclaimed we just had that conversation prior to coming here it's that it'll be what, class four you said yeah class four so we're able to use it basically be sustainable we won't have to add chlorine to it at our point but what we're using a lot for other purposes we actually have the pumping system already because we use it for internal processes so to me it's not a stretch to do it and I've actually done it personally at you know, other locations. So. And I was amazed at the lot, looking at the amount of water they were reusing. The trickle through that river that the kids played in, it was, it was impressive, it was quite the statement. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the other thing, um, purple pipe <laughs> coming out of the building perhaps for irrigation, we're using plant water for irrigation as well, so perhaps we can make that kind of obvious as to where it leaves the building. Uh, as they did there, I mean, they, mm -hmm. that was part of the whole interpretive center. Here's where it goes, and you can follow the purple pipe around. And well, we can talk to Chuck too about maybe interpretive elements in that plaza, talking about what's going on in the adjacent landscape, not only in the building but what's going on in the periphery of the building. Thank you. The uh, this design is more beautiful than what I've seen in other clean water facility. Uh, like Blaine and Carnation. In Blaine, they have a parking lot right in front, and behind it, there's a little garden and walkway, like the one in the park here, and after that is water. And Carnation is more comparable to the one in Snohomish. They have interpretive center, uh, nice, beautiful landscape, and this beautiful building and landscape a lot of space right in front and uh, probably can be used for gathering people there, like the farmer's market, thing, thing, thing. Yeah, there's a lot of space. That, 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 of space. Public, that plaza, I think, will be something the city will be pretty proud of, and I think it'll be well used. Thank you. Mrs. Mike? Um, I think the team has done a good job integrating this into the park so it's not like your treatment plant and then you have these other things. The promenade when you stand on 
pioneer way and you look down you know having the wind whatever you're going to call it as a focal point but it just takes you throughout the whole park and it truly is part of it so I think that was a terrific idea and the idea that here you have your beach water but the water is back here and it's going toward so it's it's taking you along with it and so I, I think it really uh, you achieve very well in the design so I like it that's, very that's, much I think that's come a long way I think people will <laughs> truly be shocked when this gets done from the big hole to they really have no clue I mean we yeah. were able to tour a lot uh, Vancouver had their interpret center was completely different and uh, but the elaborate landscaping they had to go around and their um, quite lush yes quite lush but they're using their biosolids <laughs> yes <laughs> really it's 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 almost out of control lush but it's quite lush yeah. Mr. Albert thank you Danny um, how many square feet well let me ask this other question we have a 90 percent design right now that's being reviewed for cost purposes for the treatment facility not the admin sector uh, does that current plan that the 90 percent dot design working on does that include these architectural features that you have on the balance of this building there's or is that that's obviously just a, an allowance item for the finish yes is that I don't know, maybe Brett, you can answer the that. The process buildings that we're seeing 90% have these architectural features on. I'm not sure if we've selected the final brick colors and that but, type of thing. But the estimate that they're working on now it's includes similar design yeah. features, architectural design features on the surface, et cetera. Uh, Jeff, okay. And, uh, but we have, like I say, the non-process is coming up to speed. So right, right. now we have not identified, right. got this priced in. How many square feet in the non-process building uh, are we talking about, you know, with the admin all the way down to the biosolids? Uh, how many square feet are included in that, do you know? Um, it's gone through about six different iterations, so. I thought it was like 6,500. 6,500, I think. 6,500. And you guys work on a preliminary estimate concept when you're working on the design, thinking what is the cost, approximately the cost of this section going to be? Do you even consider that when you're doing the design? Oh, yeah. So how much, then, is the approximate square footage cost of this section? You mean cost per square foot? Mm -hmm. um, I'm to be careful in the way I answer I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's really an architectural question. <laughs> yes, it is an architectural question. It, it is. When someone comes to us and says, we have this building, how much is it going to cost? What's my range? You know, yeah. you know the, it's somewhere between 400 and Five hundred dollars a square foot, I would say. Okay, that's probably a, a safe enough number. Um, we don't in in the contracting format we see now with the CMGC. They've been on board. Um, early numbers are usually a little bit higher, and they taper down once mm -hmm. once they get defined. And so, so, so we're looking at the square footage of the admins at facility. You said what, sixty five hundred square feet, mm -hmm. roughly, sixty five hundred plus or minus and 500 to 600 square foot roughly I'm not said four to five four to five yeah and, and if where you're headed is to do the math and then to add that on to the number when it gets to the 90 no, percent no, 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 I don't no. I, I think the design team would say that we're better off waiting till we get I'm, to the end point I'm no my question I wanted to know while you're doing the design also considering the cost of going through the with the design process absolutely from the architectural perspective not necessarily from the contractors perspective I mean you guys work with these numbers all the time you do so you kind of know where it's going but 
I'm trying to understand your question. Um, in other words, are we we're finding the cost as we as we develop the design? I think he's asking, are you cost sensitive when you're going through the design process? Oh, we have to be. Yeah. Oh, we have you to. Know, be. You, you know what the cost per, let's say, per square foot of the surface materials that you're choosing and, sure. and, and the masonry and all that kind of stuff. You guys, you have yep. data uh, banks that tell yep. you what that is. Mm -hmm. So you are looking at that as you're going through this thing. That's, yep. that's, a, that's my question. That's we right. are. But what makes 6,500 square feet. There is an interpretive center, mm -hmm. there's a laboratory, <coughs> there's a control room with SCADA, mm -hmm. there's locker rooms, <coughs> there's conference rooms on a small footprint, and there's mechanical systems that have to serve right. all of those different, you know, some occupant loads, some lab, those sorts of things. And so some of it so related to the process buildings. Some too. of it related to the process buildings. Plus there's, you know, there's uh, the electronics going into this and the SCADA mm -hmm. is not a, not a small number. <coughs> So that on a small footprint actually brings the, the cost of the buildings up. So I'm hedging a little bit because we do some of these facilities that are 40,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And amortizing that mechanical system on 40,000 square right. feet is very different than a mechanical system that we've got, which is actually using some of the electrical loads from the electrical building right. to heat the building, for instance. But it, it, you're not getting economies of scale with a smaller building. And, and I, I understand that, and I also understand you don't value the cost of a building by counting windows and saying, well, you know, we've got 50 windows, so the building's going to cost X number of dollars, you know, and even the square footage price sure. is going to vary in different segments of the building. So I was just curious, the general range, when you guys are doing the design, approximately what is the general range of the cost of this, anticipated cost of this building? It's about what I said before. Mm -hmm. What did I say before? Four to five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> well, keep in mind we're also <laughs> we're also designing for longevity too. Yeah. Right. You so. know, everybody's getting nervous when I start asking. <laughs> <laughs> Never know where you're going to go. It's, it's 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 you know we're not hiding anything. It's yeah. all public record. But th that is that is a that is a. Um, it, it comes up on every one, every one of our projects is cost sensitive. You know, everybody thinks these municipal jobs, there's just a lot of money um, that goes into these things. But this is a 50 to 100 year facility and the materials have to be durable and they have to be something that you don't need, don't maintain. I think so, you've done it from what we have here, in my personal opinion, is it, it, I like the colors, I like the materials, I like the concept. Thank you. Um, I, I really do like a lot of it. Yeah. What colors do you like? I like the darker colors. The dark. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But but see, you have varying shades in there. You know, mm -hmm. it, you, you're going th this palette of light, even on the same field, the same mm -hmm. plane. You have the texture and you have the color variation. Mm -hmm. In the same way with the shape of the building. I, you know, it's not the standard box uh, industrial park look. Good. Well, Steve's up with that, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You talked a little bit about the, the, some of the cool, you know, sort of all the technology and things inside the, the administrative buildings and the labs. How, um, have, I just want to make sure there's a lot of thought taken into maybe security of some of those areas. Sure. And the plant itself, like the gates and, I mean, I know we have sort of a public entry, but um, did you add in, you know, I just want to make sure you, I so think about like security of keeping the public where they shouldn't. <laughs> no, you're uh, you're asking a timely question. Um, the, the security aspect of this project, uh, we've had a several meetings with a, a security okay. consultant who's looking at all the perimeter of this building, uh, the camera views, all of those things. So we're trying not to make it, you know, a prison. Yeah, you um, and we're also trying to be kind of mindful of the cost of security. Um, the you know putting a, a electronic key on on doors. That's expensive. People don't know really how much that costs, but it's very expensive per door. So we have to be very diligent about where we put those devices. And um, we've had quite a dialogue with security in terms of um, knowing who's in the buildings, being able to recognize if somebody comes in on the weekends and something disappeared, who was there. Um, cameras in various locations that tie into control rooms um, that are recorded um, and gates that are activated you know, after dark. and uh, if, if there's an alarm that goes off, who gets notified? So, so there's been this sort of security discussion that has gone on. Um, the security consultant is, is 
doing a good job and we're integrating some of those elements after several meetings thus far. Did I answer your question? Yes, very okay. well, thank you. After the design phase, the next process will be the bidding process where you already have the estimated cost of the building. Yeah. And then the bidding process will for construction of the building. Yes, this, this uh, that ties together with their conversation um, that we had on Tuesday night a little bit. So we're working on, um, we have the 90% drawings for the process buildings, and we're working on, Hoffman, I should say, is working on a cost estimate for that as well as doing a review on the 90% drawings. Um, your 90% drawings, we're looking for, is it August, September? Time frame. Uh, I think it's in August. <clears throat> so then, the, so the admin and maintenance buildings it would follow behind, and we do go through the same process. Some of the bidding that would occur for the for the 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 work ninety percent drawings we have right now, uh, we'd be looking to come to. I can I think it's the first meeting in September for award of that part of the work, and it would be you know a month or two after that for the remainder. Does that yeah. answer? Uh, yeah, what, okay. Yeah. Timeline. Yeah, the sequence has worked out pretty well in terms of establishing costs here because this work is included with the landscape architectural and because the park master plan has been quite an effort at this point, <clears throat> we're trying to figure out what's in the first phase of the park master plan and that has to be included in those in the in that bid package as well. Including the integration of the park. Yeah. Right. Maybe I shouldn't have brought that up because that's no, no, actually a good okay. segue. That is, okay. council knows that's that's where most of this team is heading next. We're going down to the to the CAG meeting uh, to meet uh, what is probably our last time with our community advisory group to talk to them about the revised preferred concept based on input from the community. Uh, we did, as you heard on Tuesday evening, we did provide a notice of attendance in case one or more of you uh, wish to observe that proceeding. Obviously, you're not required to be there. And we'll report back to you on the result of that meeting at an upcoming workshop. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Any further <coughs> comments, questions? I, yes. I do. It sounds like dark. <coughs> it sounds like dark. Sorry. Darker. Right. Is what I'm hearing is a. I like what's presented here. Yes. Okay. Darker color. Okay. Not everybody likes the darker color. <laughs> That's right. Jim was a light. I wrote that down. <laughs> So we're not commenting on any of the rest of this, just what's inside the red box right now? Yep. For now. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> There's a consensus on the council. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're not making decisions right now. Okay. <laughs> Hearing no further comments questions, this concludes our workshop. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.